So you can see here, this is the main dashboard, but it's it's with some different features. Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. This is the fourth and final video in my series on dashboard design for data analysts. In this video, we're going to focus on adding some additional features to the main dashboard. We're going to add some colors. We're going to add some buttons. We're going to add some advanced capabilities and something called report tooltips in Power BI. Sometimes when you add additional features, it's a little bit easy to go over the top. And this is usually how far I like to take it. So you can see here, this is the main dashboard, but it's, it's with some different features. So this is the original one. And this is the one that we have changed and that we're, we are going to create in this video. So you can see that instead of having it by month, I have it per date. And you can see that I have a trend line going here, which shows which way the sales is trending. So if I change to January, I can see how it was trending then quite stable. If I go to March, a little bit downwards throughout the year, it has been increasingly throughout the year. I have also, you can see here, I have two buttons. I have product and subcategory. If I hold control and I click subcategory, it changes the bar chart below is just another feature which is nice to add sometimes which is the buttons you can also see if you look at this bar chart you can see that I have used colors to show increasingly how the sales are increasing as you go and that is also something that is nice to use sometimes colors to indicate if something is high or low if something is below or above target and the last feature that I wanted to add on this dashboard is if you take the mouse over one of these points I have created a tooltip, which is also a report, which is the top five sales per product. And as you take it over to different cities, it is filtering down what you're seeing in the tooltip. So these are some advanced capabilities that you can add. I like to add it sometimes if the end user is ready for it, if they have used the dashboard long enough, if they know how the basic features are, then you can start to add more advanced stuff to give even more insight and even more uh, understanding for the data and just a better user user experience and more dynamic functions and features. So let's start by copying the main dashboard where there are none of these uh, features available. So the first one and the most obvious one is, let's start with the line chart. So you can see right now it is per month and to be able to do the advanced features you can see over here, there are some things you can do already. You can do an average, you can do a a uh, min and max line, some percentiles, some things you can do. But what you actually want, you want the x-axis to be continuous. And if I set it to that, it's just going to set it back to categorical. And I need to fetch, I need to fetch the date field and replace the month field so that we have a continuous, uh, continuous axis. So if I do that, I'm going to replace that there. You'll see it changes quite a bit. So I'll remove the month and I will remove the budget because it is a monthly budget. So, oh, wrong one. I will remove the budget. Now you can see uh, the sales throughout the year for the different, um, different dates. And now if I go back to the advanced analytics pane, now you can see I have a trend line. You can even play around with the forecast, but we're gonna work on the trend line right now. So I'm just gonna add it right away. It's just gonna give a trend line how it is trending this year. So I can just type sales trend. You can change the colors, you can play around with it if you want to. Quite simple, quite easy, but it gives somewhat of an advanced uh, capability without it being, uh, I would say, too much of a leap from what it originally was. The next thing that I wanna focus on is the colors. And I'm gonna focus on this one and we can start by just giving the colors and then afterwards we can build the buttons. So if I go here, you can see data colors. You can see you have this FX icon, which is uh, a formula icon. If you click that one, you can see you can create a scale. So you can have format by different things. You can have rules, field values. We're gonna focus on the color scale. And here you can set whatever you want as low and high. And I'm just gonna leave it at default. I'm gonna put it a little bit brighter on the red side. Click OK. You can already see now, the lower you are, the lower the sales. The more red, the higher, the more green. Actually, like I think I chose the wrong field. I can see it now. And there you go. I can easily see that this is the darkest, but this should be the darkest. Which, what did I do? So I count of subcategory, I actually need sales here. 
Now you can see the top one is the darkest one. So there you can see how the colors play, play a function. Now let's create the buttons. And this takes a little bit more time, but we can do it. So I'm gonna copy this one and I'm just gonna put it above. And right now it's a sub category. I'm just gonna change it to be per product. And now I need to add two different elements that I can use to switch between these two different views. So let's do that. So we'll go insert and we will go, I believe it is, oh, let's go blank on the buttons. I'm gonna get this one. We'll add that there. And you can see I can add some button text. So I'll call this product. Just make it, actually we don't need that much space. We can just do it like this. And we will scroll down, move down so that we have that. Actually I need both of them to be So we have product, I'm gonna copy that. And there we will have a subcategory. And this is where things get, I wouldn't say things get tricky, but it's, you just need to keep uh, your tongue straight in your mouth. Because what, what we're doing here is we're gonna create two different bookmarks that we are going to connect to the two different buttons and they're gonna flick between two different views. So let's change the text on this to subcategory. And while we are at it, we might as well fix the look of it. So we'll do that and then we can do background. Let's turn that on. There we are. And I don't want any outline. And as, as I've said before, whole format painter, paint, boom, nice and easy. So let's go to view and you will see you have a selection pane and you have a bookmarks. And what we're gonna do, you can see I've already created this because I wanted to do this beforehand. But you can see I have this one. That's one of the buttons, this is the other buttons. And then we have product name. You can see if I click there now, I'm gonna hide it. I'm gonna show the subcategory. And I believe that is this one. So let's drag those there. So I wanna create a bookmark where I show the subcategory and I wanna add that to this button. And then I want another bookmark that looks like this, which is in product, which I add to that button. So let's do that first. So let's do add, and I'll call this bookmark, let's call this product version two. So we have the product name. I'm gonna do to in a way data so that we don't change any of the data as we change the bookmark. Uh, we're gonna turn off current page. Then I'll update this, updates. Now I have a bookmark which looks like this. Then I need to create another bookmark which is called subcategory version two. And then I'm gonna hide product name. I'm gonna show the subcategory. I'm gonna go remove data, remove current page, and I'm gonna set that to update. So now this view is connected to that bookmark and this part is connected to that bookmark. So see now I can just switch between and it is only changing those two. Last thing I need to do is I need to click, click the button format button and then format button and then action we'll go bookmark we have the product buttons of course product version 2 we have the subcategory button turn on an action tie it to a bookmark and then you can see we go subcategory version 2 so now if I hold hold control you'll see it will flick between the two different categories Usually you don't have to hold control in the service in the Power BI service. You can just click between them So that is another advanced uh, capability which we have added the last thing I want to do is to add these report tooltips So what I need to do is I need to create a new page I'll call it report by product name version 2 and on this one, I need to make sure that the page is actually set up as a tooltip. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to go page size. We'll go tooltip. So that's going to look like that. We will add a bar chart, regular bar chart, nothing special. It looks quite blown up. It's just because it is a tooltip. Then we'll do it like we've done before. We will search for product. We'll put 
that on the axis. We will search for sales, put that on the values. Now we're gonna do one thing which is a little bit different. We're gonna go here and we're gonna filter the product name on the top, so press top N. It's gonna give me the top, whatever you want, top five, top 10, let's do five. Buy, buy some sort of value, so I need to drag sales. So product name by the top five sales. So here you can see I have that now. And what's gonna happen when you put your mouse over the different cities, the, the city filter is gonna apply to this so that it filters what you already see here. So you actually get the top five per, per product name per city. Now before I do that, I want the same formatting on this page as I've used other places. So let's go back, let's click this one. Home, format painter. I will scroll over to my new table put it on perfect we used all my formatting it looks great the last thing that I have to do is I have to go back to my dashboard this was the second version you can see there is nothing here if I click this one though visualizations then I will go here and you can see tooltip I click the tooltip then you have report page or you have the default we're gonna have a report page tooltip and I'll change the page I will change to the one I just created, report by product name version two. And when that is done, I will put my mouse over. And now you get a different tool tip for different cities because what is happening, you're taking the top five bar chart and as you are putting it over the city, that is also combined creating a filter for the top five product name sorted by sales per city. So that is the last advanced feature that I wanted to show you guys. So there you have some of the advanced features which you can add to your dashboard. Now keep in mind, don't go overboard. Don't add too much the first few times. Let the end users get to know your dashboard. Let them get used to it. You know, the navigation, the main dashboard, the details page, how all of this works. Then as time goes by, you can add more and more of these kind of functions and features as they get more used to it. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.